So, that was it. The world premiere of Messeron, the man. Um, thank you for watching abroad. Um, give it up for the main actors of this amazing movie. Søren Malling, lead actor. Jacob Oeftebreu. <laughs> and, of course, the director, the genius, Charlotte Seeling. Um, I'm inviting everyone to uh, join the conversation because um, I'm just your intermediate. If you have anything to say or to ask, thank you for being here. Uh, have a seat on the couch. Let's thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. With the world premiere. How do you feel? Uh, good. Yeah? Good. And what about you? <laughs> Um, if you want to ask something or say something, you can use uh, WhatsApp. The number is still on the bottom left of your screen. Uh, we have the hashtag Live Cinema on Twitter, and we have Facebook and everything. So okay, start cool. sending those questions and comments. <laughs> so, um, I've got a, I've got one for you right away. Um, I can see on the screen it's a. I don't know if you're brilliant. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 it's, uh, it says in Dutch, great movie, by the way. Well, there are many comments <laughs> like that. Um, here it says, Søren, I'm a big fan of you since Borgen, but you look quite different in this movie. <laughs> it says Marit. <laughs> I think it's the clothes, I think. Oh, it's the clothes. Yeah. The pajamas. Yeah, the pajamas did the magic, yeah. didn't it? Actually, I had, uh, it was actually Charlotte's uh, idea that I should wear pajamas, and I thought it was, why? What the fuck? Why? I mean... A bit weird, but I loved it. And I had like four pajamas, different colors. <laughs> uh, and actually, today I have one at home. Ah, okay. It's still dirty. <laughs> I mean, with a lot of the painting on it. So it you it's grew amazing. into it. It's pure silk. Yeah. It's pure silk. Mm. It's lovely. Uh, Charlotte, um, uh, thank you for being here. How do you, do you feel? Because it's the first time it's been I was, screened. Yeah, um, what can I say? Amazing. <laughs> do you feel any kind of tension mm. when you're sitting there amongst everyone? No, I just feel very, very happy that, you know, when you do what I do, <laughs> then you work for a long time and then all of a sudden you lose, in a way you lose the feeling of this is going anywhere, you're just working and working. I've been writing for seven years. Mm -hmm. I've been working at television for a long time, but those seven years I've been developing the character and the end bit of the, of the script it took me seven years to find that exhibition and the glasses. So it was the movie without the glasses and without the exhibition in the end, ah, and I couldn't finish it. That was quite a plot twist. I felt very <laughs> stupid and idiotic for a long time, and it was in my drawer, and the film institute kept on saying, it's not good enough, it's, uh, you don't get money, and all of a sudden I realized he has to level with the father, uh -huh. and then... Uh, Break him down. Has to level with him. Yeah. He cannot just arrive like a little teenager wanting to have some attention because mm -hmm. that's not how that's not how the world works mm -hmm. so once i realized that then i got to make the movie and now all of a sudden i'm like oh my god this is why i made it i made it because i want to communicate mm -hmm. and sitting here knowing that 45 cinemas are watching my movie at the same time is rather amazing i have to say that Jeez. because you forget Jeez. that once you you could i don't even know what the movie is about i've just being, you know, working on it and, and having these guys around me. But now I know that that's why uh, we are making it and it yeah. really pleases me that you guys are here. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, well, you already said you worked on it for seven years. It's, it's part of a trilogy. It's, this is the second part. Yeah. Um, and now you're, well, investigating or researching um, everything about the man. Um, why? Well, it's very simple and very stupid because the first movie was about divorces because my whole community where I live and where I am, everybody got divorced. And I thought, if I'm going to... S the only thing I know anything about is divorces right now, so I made the movie. <laughs> A little bit of therapy as well. Uh, yeah, I think so it is. <laughs> Movies like this has yeah. to do with yourself, otherwise you can do a lot of other fun stuff. But then I thought, okay, to keep the last day of shooting, we had the last party and I got drunk and I was thinking, if I'm ever going to make a movie again, I have absolutely no idea of what and why and how, mm -hmm. but I know that I have to have one. I have to always to have a movie that is working inside of me mm -hmm. or a story somehow. Then what can I do? So I thought, okay, 
this was a man and a woman that a lot of men and a lot of women that didn't find out how to connect. And then I just thought, okay, I'm just going to make a movie about a man and a movie about a woman. And the mm -hmm. first one would be the man, the next biggest mystery in the world for me, because the biggest mystery is the woman. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and that's the next part, right? That's yeah. the third part. Yeah. yeah. So and we are both in it as women. women. As women. Oh. <laughs> no, <then. laughs> you can do anything. But, but is this what you think of men? Because then I'm a bit worried. Uh, yeah, and I you understand. guys must be as well, because... No, it's uh, not a... It's, it's not, not, a, not a pretty sight, actually. I know. No, and also it is also a pretty sight, in my opinion. It's these guys... It's cute and horrible. Yeah, I mean, they make those chairs that we are sitting in since the 30s, these kind of guys. They make those beautiful, amazing movies and... Uh, and paintings and stuff that we want to look at to make life beautiful. But mm -hmm. when you go behind a person, actually I started by writing on a, about a, a soldier. And I went to the institute with my, my uh, pitch and, and they were looking at me very good. So now you're going to research? Mm -hmm. And I was kind of, no, no, no. I'm just going to tell a story about a, a father and the son. Why is he a soldier? Well, I don't know. I just had to pick something. And then they sent me home with no money. Uh -huh. And then I just started to think who, and since I was, I, since I was born, I was around people like uh, artists. You're from an artistic family, yeah, so to I say, right? I have to right? say that, yes. Yeah. So this is the only world I know. I know those dinners and I know, I think I just had to realize this is the worst idea. Everybody said, who wants to watch a movie about an artist? Nobody. Don't tell us about real people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was kind of, okay, it's the worst idea, and it took me seven years, but mm -hmm. I'm going to stick to it, and I'm just going to, because I'm not, what I realize is that this is what I'm, in, I'm interested in relationships, you know, <laughs> about people. But is it based on someone in your personal life, your father or an uncle or someone? No, because it's, it's based certain, such an outspoken character. No, it's just based, no, it's not. It's based on all the men I know, I think, in that... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're not lucky in life, are you? <laughs> no, based on is not the same as... Okay, okay, okay. The same, no. There are good... But it developed, you know, all the time... It developed. Some yeah. of the dialogues are still seven years old, but uh, but it, he became him. And I want to also... I, I, don't, I also want to entertain mm. and to show it, put it out there. I mean, the world is crazier than this, right? Mm. This is just a little bit crazy. The man-child. Yeah, very. I think that's the theme that the grown-ups, in my, in my vision of, especially the divorce moment, then you saw all these grown-ups of people behaving like ch children because yeah. they couldn't do better. Mm -hmm. And the kids just kind of as eight years old or 13 years old became grown-ups like this. Uh -huh. So it's also some of that, I think. The child is still in there. Yeah. Um, uh, another question. Anne, Anna de Berg says on Twitter, uh, could it have been about a mother and a daughter? Or is it specifically something for the male race? I mean, I could try seven years again and see what happens. <laughs> but is it just as exciting? Is there, is this same tension no. going on between mothers definitely, and daughters? Definitely, definitely, definitely. It would be, I don't know what it would be. Mm -hmm. It would take me a lot of time. We can, if, if I can talk to the person later... You're talking can, to her now? Yeah, hi. <laughs> no, but we could... It, it would take... I mean, it takes time. You, you don't know. You get an idea. Yeah. You cannot say, could it have been? I would ask everybody else, could it have been? Because for me, it would take time to find out if, if mm. it could have been or how it would have been if it could have been. Yeah. Other question is uh, from uh, Kino Nove Horizonti, also on Twitter. Um, uh, Kino says, was it more about men or more about artists? Because, well, it was a specific kind of man, of course. To me, it's definitely about a father and a son. Mm. And then I'm very happy I kept the artist because then it gave me a big, a huge visual leverage in the movie. And I could, and as Cern said, when we worked, you say, oh, it gives me some freedom. I can wear these pajamas and I can do like this with my hair. And I can, it, this is high to the ceiling. Mm. So... For you guys, was it easily easy to relate to the story? Because you read the script for the first time, did you think, okay, yeah, this is what we're about? Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. Sorry? I mean, honestly, when I read, and Charlotte knows this, so it, it doesn't matter if I say it. So let me be honest, when I read the script the first time, I said, what the fuck is this? I mean, yeah. like, <laughs> I didn't get it, but I felt there was, there was something in it. So I had to read it over and over again. And then I finally called him and said, yeah, let's meet. I know what it's all about. 
I like that part. I it took three times to, to, to get them on board, it right? Took, it took even more, maybe 10 times, I mean, reading through. Really? But there was something like, and the first time I didn't get the, the part about the glasses that he was shooting, he was feeling was like, the revenge what's bit. it all about? It's like, and maybe I'm being stupid, sorry, but I had to really go over and over it. What does uh, it say about you that you don't understand it? This may be, you may be a good one to think you know, about. I'm just trying to be honest, okay? <laughs> we, we made the movie, it's, it's okay. Yeah. But it, for me, it took some time here to now. get into it. Yeah. yeah, and I was also surprised that the, Charlotte asked me for that because I didn't, I couldn't see myself when I read it the first time. Mm -hmm. I mean, always when I have been giving a script and I read it, I always take myself into the script when I'm reading it uh -huh. because otherwise it, it doesn't make sense because that's what you've been asked as an actor. Would you like to be part of this movie? Yeah. I'm not being asked, do you think it's a great story? I mean, first of all, for me, could I see myself in it? And would I like to be a part of it? Yeah. And do I also think it's a good story? But could you relate to uh, the emotions that your character had? Yes, I because, could. Because um, you're in your early, if I can tell. Thank you, I'm plus 50. Plus sorry. 50, early yeah. 50s. In my early 60s. Um, <coughs> he's literally, uh, uh, well, uh, still in his midlife crisis, mm -hmm. uh, the character. So, well, everyone has a midlife crisis somewhere in his life. Could you relate in that way? Like, yeah, I, can, I can understand when he's, he's afraid of a, a youngster taking, a, taking his place. Okay, let me be honest again. Um, the thing about this script which actually uh, grabbed me, sorry for my words, by the balls, was like, I have a son. Yeah. He's actually the same age as Jacob. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my wife got divorced. I left the family for a period. Mm -hmm. Uh, my son called me one day, Daddy, can I move in with you? And I was like, yeah, of course. And we spent at least four or five years literally fighting. Wow. I mean, really. I'm sorry to say so. And if you're, if you're watching, I love you. I'm very, I mean, now he's old and he's an adult, but, uh, but you're, it, it really great now? Or? No, no, no. We have a great time now. But okay. it really was a hard time for yeah. us can to imagine. get together again. But did he you know he was so that he had no, this that's personal that's story? The first thing he told me when, when so we that's a coincidence. Hit. Yeah. Wow. Um, Jakob, um, you yeah. read the story I for do the first time. Could story. you understand this, 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 the storyline? Like, oh yeah, uh, at a certain age, you're getting afraid of someone else being better than you, taking over your place, taking in your place. I mean, the movie is definitely questioning the patriarch. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, every child has to meet their parents at some point and sort of take them apart mm -hmm. and become a grown-up, your own human being. Mm -hmm. And in that process, you definitely have to see your mother and father and see them as human beings and not some demigod. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's been walking around in this closed hemisphere where he's, he's this... Um, artist, everybody loves him, he's acknowledged, he sells this art, and then suddenly something from his past comes and say, hey, you actually have a responsibility and something you've been running from, mm. which I think is really beautiful about the story and which, which makes it um, all around. I mean, of course, he's, uh, he's a lot. Soren's character is, is very... Or you say self-conscious, and uh, and and my character is is also very provocative. Yeah. But I mean, in the way that um, you have a kid tr uh, coming to um, his parents and s tr asking some questions and saying, uh -huh. "Who are you? Why did you do those things? Why did you t t t took those choices? Mm -hmm. And why did you leave me here?" Which is which is nice, I think, which made me. Um, relate to the story. And yeah, but because you're from artistic family as well. Your, your father is a well-known actor, right? My father is a well-known actor, so... A <laughs> little bit the same situation, or no? Exactly no. the same. Really? Okay. <laughs> you picked the right, no, no, no. No, picked I mean, the right he's guys. He's, sure. he's an actor, and, and uh, he, his main hobby is to paint. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> So poor you. <laughs> no, no, no. I've been growing up with a uh, father standing painting naked, you know. Not now. Okay, okay. No, but he's. I've <laughs> but my okay. father has always been great. But it's. I mean, when you have. I mean, for me, growing up with a uh, with an artistic parent, it was normal, you know, because that was my dad. But, but, uh, but definitely, it, it's it's always fun to work up to grow up with someone eccentric. Yeah.
I guess. Question from Alex. Uh, yeah, well, maybe it's for uh, well, anyone to answer. Uh, Alex says, is Ghost, uh, your character, based on uh, Banksy? Uh, it's because it's uh, the tagging. Uh, it the has some parallels, definitely. Yeah. And uh, it has some parallels to some Danish, known Danish uh, graffiti artist as well. We looked a lot at uh, Blue, the, the Berlin artists, you know, the ones that paint walls during the night. And mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's parts and bits of pieces of, of a lot of, um, lot of artists. I Can think. I tell a little story about Sure, that? sure. <clears throat> In all the breaks we had, when we were just between shooting, Jacob disappeared into the workshop where they made all the paintings and they did everything and he just did all the paintings himself. Seriously? The beautiful one you see when he... Yeah. <laughs> because Dennis is asking uh, who made the artworks in the, in the yeah, film. Yeah, he didn't... He, we had some, some ideas from the beginning, but Jacob came the first day, he said, that's not me. Uh -huh. And then he went up and then they gave it to him because it was amazing uh, Czech, uh, Czech artists. Uh, who helped, who we really struggled a lot to try to find the the, the touch that we wanted. Uh -huh. But then Jacob just came up and said, no, 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 the baby has to have a blindfold. Uh, the father has to have the hand in his pajamas when he's lying in all the... So uh -huh. he changed all that. And the one on the... Wow. When they're standing on the scaffolding and he's totally changing his father's things for the Carlsberg Foundation... You, did, you just made that, and I didn't even see it whilst, whilst we were shooting. And I just, we want this shot and this. Oh, he did this. <laughs> he ruined everything, and it's beautiful. <laughs> um, this is a good one. Uh, again, from Anne, Anna de Berg. Um, has Oedipus something to do with the story? Is that a little bit different? But okay, go ahead. Well, maybe for you. Well, uh, I, yes and no. Uh, Thank what you. Can I say? Next, no, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah>. Go ahead. <laughs> I really don't think so. I mean, for me, it didn't mean anything. I yeah. never had that thought. I mean, but uh, I think for me, the basic thing was like actually the very. I mean, as a middle-aged Christ man, or maybe put. Let me put it another way. This guy, let's say he's 50 years old. He spent his whole life building up a huge career. He's world famous. Uh, he feels and he act like I'm the king, mm. not only my own house, I'm the king of the whole fucking world. Mm. For such a guy, it's so easy in the movie that when a guy, he left because he left his mom before he was born, 30 years ago, enters the room, it's that simple to make the king fall. I mean, for me, that was like what tricked me. Mm. If that's uh, Oedipus, I don't know, but... Uh. But I think it has to do with a lot of myth. And in the script earlier, uh, before the ending came in, because mm -hmm. now he's totally asexual, he's non-sexual. Mm -hmm. And in, this, in the beginning, I just thought, okay, the, the kid's coming home, and he's going to take everything away from his father. Very simple, he's just going to take over mm -hmm. by his charisma. Mm -hmm. So he would take the wife and have sex with her, he will take the mistress, have sex with her, and even live with her. He want, in the end, he, should, he was going to li uh, be, be a boyfriend he to the young girl. He went for the complete girl. demolition. Yes, and, <laughs> and also, of course, the, uh, the gallery guy, the guy from the gallery. Oh, yeah. But then once we, we came closer to it, and also even in editing, we had some kissing going on, not sex, but kissing with some of the girl, with the, both of the women. Then we just realized, no, 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 that's not his subject at all. Uh -huh. So there is, I think, as an answer to, your, to the question, that there is, every time you deal with relationship in a family, you will find all the old myth, some a little piece of this and a little bit. Mm. So yes, a little piece. A little bit of Oedipus, Oedipus think, there. Yeah, yeah. But not played out totally in... No. It's not an easy way more subtle than you actually yeah. intended in yeah. earlier on yeah. in the right process now, really, of seven yeah. years. Um, sound this like one is very important. Like, that sounds like a title of a new movie. A little bit of Oedipus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, or a book a about your life. Jantin <laughs> says, where can we buy such a great sweater? I think it's about the... 
Is your team here? <laughs> I don't think you could buy it. It was the custom designer who found it. And then, I mean, he had, she's have it's a... Like, it's like the killing. Everybody uh, wants oh, the it's like, yeah. First we saw the killing, <laughs> yeah. uh, the sweater from the Faroe Island. Yeah. We just found it. It was actually Charlotte. She was in love with it. And when I saw it the first time, I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> so it's good to mention because we all know that you've I mean, met each other about in the, uh, the bridge, I think, uh, right? You've worked no, we made together in, in the bridge. Mm, you've worked together no, they, in the bridge. They, no, we did worked. We worked, we worked together with the killing and the uh, Borgen. And Borgen. And Borgen. Yeah. And not the bridge. No. Not the bridge. Oh. We uh, worked. We know each other since I was. Very a young, young actor. A young actor, At right? School. Because you're from, you're a Norwegian actor actually. Yeah. Uh, now playing a D Danish role, yeah. fluently yeah. Uh, speaking oh, yeah. Danish. Yeah. Apparently, is that difficult He's for a Norwegian kid. people actually? Wonder kid. Is a wonder kid? <laughs> okay. He paints everything. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Okay. Speak no. um, the Danish. Uh, uh, other question, uh, Jacob, tell the truth. Did you perform your own stunts, says Luz on WhatsApp? Uh, yeah. Uh, so you climbed as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, you can do anything. It's okay. Um, <laughs> and we Gail? We had a stunt guy uh, on set, but Charlotte didn't think it was good enough, so I got to do it. <laughs> I got yeah. to do them myself. It's incredible. The, it's yeah. so beautiful when he, the big shot when Jacob in the opening sequence, when he, that's him, because it was music, and the other guy was kind of ding, 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 so. And was I jealous? Yes, I was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can imagine now I mean, the story come on, continues. Come on, what the, what the fuck? <laughs> Mr. Perfect here. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Scandinavian uh, version of Brad Pitt, what the uh, fuck are you doing? I want to show you guys something, because, um, well, uh, the whole story is about tagging, about the, the, the art put on the walls. Um, they do this as well in Rotterdam, and some artists has been, have been inspired by your work. Look at it. What I liked about the movie, it was realistic, humoristic, and very recognizable. I don't only recognize myself, but also uh, some friends and some colleagues, which makes it very nice to watch. The movie inspired me to use new materials, try different techniques, and push my boundaries. Tonight we pasted up four works that I made based on the movie. We started with the pajama party. I thought it was very nice and, and recognizable. The dad is always walking around in his pajamas, even when he has different clothes. Uh, you can still see the pajamas underneath. So if you're curious about the works that I did, all you have to do is visit the locations where the movie screened during the film festival Rotterdam 2017. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> um, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, it should be outside. So if you go out, uh, uh, wow. amazing. look around. Uh, what is your agenda about graffiti, says Gal on WhatsApp. Is there an agenda? Do you want to say something with the... Yeah, I think so. I, yeah, it's the ghost that puts his name there because he wasn't recognized from the beginning. Uh -huh. Yeah. But do you have something with graffiti in general because it's the, yeah, I, I just the new art versus the traditional art, maybe? No, I would just say that Banksy. Yeah, I just love that people get a voice, mm. and that's what street art is. It's people getting a voice, and yeah. If you, if you do research, you can see that people have been doing it since the Roman era. Hmm. Writing, you know, that modern poems or things on the toilet or on the walls. I think uh, the importance of being heard mm -hmm. and making a mark, yeah. you know, feeling that the earth in some way bears your mark is important. Hmm. Now. He knows everything, doesn't he? Uh, Bas says, did you draw inspiration <laughs> from the art world in Copenhagen or anywhere, anywhere yeah. else? Definitely. Was it important? We have an amazing artist called Christian Lemmertz. Mm -hmm. And uh, the moment was, we have a little, uh, a moment in the movie which is kind of a little over, what do you call that? It's like, uh, uh, son is sitting in the chair after his wife's wife come in and say, you hit him. And then he's sitting with wine and the cigarette. Mm -hmm. I talk with myself. And then he talks with his, <laughs> and that's the only improv. About myself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's the only improvisation in the movie. Yeah. Because there was something with the scheduling. Uh, all of a sudden, I had six hours where I couldn't do anything. So I asked Cern to 
sit in the chair. And since CERN went to this Danish artist called Christian Lemmatz, well, he's German, but he lives in Denmark. And he was, back in the 80s when I was a young actress, he yeah. was a young painter, and he is the whole inspiration of the, the art. And it's very, that was very difficult, because we, you could never be as talented and amazing as he is. But CERN went and, and uh, talked with him and got inspired by... Mm. So some of the things he's saying there in the chair is definitely Christian Lemmatz. And you know, yeah. the funny thing was, he asked me to draw, I mean, just on a piece of paper mm. on the wall. And I was trying to say, I, can, I, I can't paint. I mean, come on, just do it. Let me see. Mm -hmm. And I was trying, and he gave me 10 things that, no, you don't have any talent. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we could talk for hours. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the time is up. Um, uh, the stream is going to be ended. Uh, everyone uh, watching, thank you for watching. We'll be back uh, with IFFR Live uh, in a couple of hours. Uh, the new uh, film you will be watching is Home. Uh, but first of all, we're going to thank, of course, our guests here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Charlotte Sieling, Jacob Ostenbrug, and Thurgood Rapping. Thank you so much. Um, and join in again uh, within a couple of hours, 8 o'clock sharp, Central European time. Thank you.